The most recent OCG ban list hit five cards from Power of the Elements, finally getting rid of the tier zero deck tier limits and hitting Castria as well. After looking at the previous ban list, that leaves seven cards on the Forbidden and Limited list from Power of the Elements and five more from the two sets following it, Magnificent Mavens and Darkwing Blast. This means Konami had to ban or limit roughly 9% of the 80 card OCG set, Power of the Elements. The highest rate of banned cards since the earliest days of Yu-Gi-Oh! with bangers like Pot of Greed. How and why did this have to happen? Well, the first and simplest explanation is that the cards were just simply broken. We can look at tournament result after tournament result, in which one deck or another from Power of the Elements has blown out the rest. At first Sprite, then overwhelmingly Tier Laments, and then we even got to see a bit of Castria towards the end. It's gone so far, in fact, that a recent no ban list tournament held in Vietnam, Tillament overwhelmingly dominated and outperformed every deck. Admittedly, this is a very skewed example, as Tier were just played and tested the most, as well as ignoring a general lack of experimentation in this extremely niche format. But Tillament did take most of the top spots in that tournament, and being able to blow out players playing Unlimited Zodiac and Magical Scientist FDK is nothing to scoff at. We've power crept the game so much that Tier Limit is to Zodiac as Performa Pal was to Girgia. This gets more at the heart of where the problem is coming from. In other words, we can see that the requirements for playing the game at a competitive level have changed. Yu-Gi-Oh! has a very long history of doing this. It's nothing new. Here's a simple breakdown of the different eras of Yu-Gi-Oh! I know it's not a universally agreed upon breakdown, but from the research I've conducted, it's a very close list. And it works well for analyzing. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh! was based around insanely powerful staple cards and a few rough combos and monster synergies. Middle era Yu-Gi-Oh! power crept out staple mush decks and replaced them with some archetypes and earlier combo strategies. Examples such as Light Sworn, Black Wings, and Trap Tricks. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! power crept the game into insane levels of searching and recursion with decks like Necroz, Pendulum Magicians, and even Zodiac. Postmodern Yu-Gi-Oh! power crept the game even further by fully embracing hand trap design and engine based decks, looking at Tri Brigade, Orcust, and Ad Emancipator for some examples. The newer stage of Yu-Gi-Oh! is odd. Previous formats power crept through bigger and more powerful effects. Of course, current decks have some insanely long effects, but what makes this current era so insane is instead something that's missing. That being restrictions and archetypes. Old decks would do something like lock you into a particular archetype, such as Cleeforts or require enough cards of the central engine to maintain the strategy. Over time, there's been an uneven, but very consistent degradation of the requirements. An engine like Ad Emancipators take a specific rock deck to really work. It's an insanely powerful engine, but it needs a specific set of circumstances and setup to be viable. Progress a bit further to the Adventure Engine, which has a decently sized cost of taking away your normal summon. A bit light overall, but still a cost, right? Then you get the Tier Limit, which literally no cost. No locked into fusion summons or archetype restrictions. Nothing. Just full, generic combo juice. The complete and utter lack of restrictions enabled decks to go from being archetypes and becoming just generic combo engines, making the game somehow faster than ever before. Sprite's level 2 restriction isn't really a real restriction. There's enough generic negates in the game at this point that sprites can just play around it, or lean into other archetypes with level 2. Castriaz are so generic they've become meta staples in helping to go second or extend combos. Not only all of this, we've begun to see full archetypes that play on your opponent's turn, regardless of going first or second. Bystrels and Tierlaments are a striking proof of concept, especially with how competitively successful Bystrels have been. Not even to get on to how the sets these cards were released in performed financially, which of course is very well. These are both new and sharp directions into types of effects we haven't seen in Yu-Gi-Oh before. Taking a sharp turn in the video. Here's an interesting theory I have about the cycles of power creep in Yu-Gi-Oh. Not sure how overall relevant this is to the rest of the video, but it's so interesting I just have to break it down by going through the concept of power creep eras. Let's start by taking note of the number of booster sets and products in each era. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh had about 17 booster sets and 11 structure decks. Middle Yu-Gi-Oh had around 23 booster sets and 16 structure decks. It's the longest out of all the eras. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh had about 17 booster sets and 14 structure decks. And by this breakdown, postmodern Yu-Gi-Oh had about 16 booster sets and 12 structure decks. These are rough estimates, but also understand the exponential amount of side sets releasing as the game progresses, such as the recent Magnificent Mavens, and of course the Battles of Legend series. The number of time it takes to hit a definitively different era of Yu-Gi-Oh, specifically in regards to power levels, is about 17 main sets. Of course, there are a ton of ways to look at this. If we take this chart a little too seriously, 
We're due for power creep now, or at least very soon. So what does this mean for the game? A friend of mine once said that Yu-Gi-Oh had hit a ceiling on power creep, that no deck had really progressed past the power level of something like full power spirals, Zodiac, or Sky Strikers. We definitely have. The game will be fine as it always is, mostly because I think the game will evolve around it just as it always has. Until it can refine its stride, it just might be very miserable for a few formats. Konami evolved hand traps in Master Rule 5 to create a super interactive and back and forth system, so I'm very curious to see how Konami will handle its new wave of power creep, especially with all the turmoil and its major competitor magic, and with the 10 or so new card games releasing in the next few years. Overall, I feel like Power of the Elements was a mistake to release when it did. I like the decks from the set, and I love some of the newly increased power output of the cards. However, the cat just can't be put back into the bag, and I'm sad to see the previous era of Yu-Gi-Oh! go. It definitely had its ups and downs, but it has contained some of my favorite formats of Yu-Gi-Oh, such as the internal format and the Despair engine format. I wouldn't make a complete tier list of the game if I didn't like the format. The post ban list OCG format seems very healthy, but this is really before a lot of newer archetypes post tier limit have been released. I do think for them it is the calm before the storm. The game will likely get faster. Take that as you will, be ready. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bit of an odd type concept video. Just had some thoughts I wanted to share about how I feel about Power Creep and Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Very interesting. No idea what video is gonna come next. Next part of the tier list might be a bit. Expect the usual, you know, wait in time. You know how it is. You subscribe to me, you know what I'm about. You get the tier list whenever it's finished. I, there's a lot of testing to be done. I still don't know how Valiants work. If anyone wants to explain it to me, please do. I'm lost. Maybe I'll do some deck profiles. That sounds like fun. You guys still like those, right? Leave a comment if there's any deck profile you'd like to see. And also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dang, it really just is automatic after a certain point. You can just go into a call of action. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.